this is really your last video promise all right so we're going to finish up talking about the steps that were taken that eventually led to the american revolution so the first continental congress meets as a result of the intolerable acts okay great britain passes the intolerable acts after the boston tea party and then we have a group of colonists who come together who say okay what are we going to do about this? Are we just going to allow this to happen? Uh, should we somehow form something to, I don't know, um, try to throw off the British government? What are we going to do? So the first Continental Congress, uh, the only thing that really comes out of that is that they pass an embargo. Okay. And this word embargo means prohibition of trade. So you have to think that Great Britain and the, the colonies were trading partners. Okay. So the colonists essentially said here with this embargo, we are no longer going to trade with Great Britain. Okay, now think about the impact that had on the colony's economy. Okay, their chief trading partner, we said, we're not going to trade with you anymore. We're done. Okay, that's a problem. Eventually, after the First Continental Congress uh, convenes and then they all go home, uh, we have the Battle of Lexington and Concord, which was fought on April 19th, 1775. Um, this is often called the first real battle of the Revolutionary War. We've got a group of colonists who are basically just like farmers with pitchforks and muskets, and they are fighting against a group of British uh, soldiers. And what you've got is a group of farmers fighting against the world's best military. Okay, so the fact that uh, Great Britain suffered heavy losses during the Battle of Lexington and Concord really gave the Americans this idea that, hey, we have a chance here. We can do something with this. Okay, so eventually that leads to the meeting of the Second Continental Congress. And this group is the one that eventually takes on the role of kind of like a central government uh, whenever we actually start the, the uh, Revolutionary War, whenever it's you know totally underway. And also uh, whenever we sign the peace treaty with Great Britain and start our new country. So the Second Continental Congress, uh, its big thing is that it decides, yeah, we actually do need a military. We need an actual Continental Army. OK, they also say that John Hancock is going to be the president of the Continental Congress. And then they name George Washington as the leader of the Continental Army. So those are kind of their big things. Eventually, and I say eventually because this doesn't happen overnight, this happens over many months, many years, uh, the Second Continental Congress decides, you know what, it's time. It's time for independence. So Richard Henry Lee, who is a delegate, he submits his resolution to Congress um, on June, in June of 1776. And he says, these colonies should be free. We should be our own country. Okay, so then a small subcommittee, a small group of people get together and they draft what's now known as the Declaration of Independence. Um, the colonies uh, are well represented in that committee. And on July 2nd, 1776, Congress officially formally votes to declare political freedom from Great Britain. Okay. On July 4th, 1776, the delegates to the um, Second Continental Congress are signing the Declaration of Independence. And then we have that wonderful document that we will look at in class. Okay, if you guys have any questions, let me know.